Okay, so that's pretty much all the general contents. Uh, I'll upload the file onto the Google Drive later and you can play around with this a bit more and read it in your own time. Happy, have you got any more questions for me in the meantime? No. Okay, uh, this is the paper you went through, right? So paper five to June 21, yeah? I haven't yes. got this tutorial. I haven't got this tutorial online actually. So I haven't, I haven't done this paper at all. Okay, but hey, guess what? Do you see this question? This is temperature against time. Guess what is this topic? This is your MC delta T enthalpy change, right? I tell you yeah. very, very popular, right? It seems like the graphical question is in question one. Was this the question you did or did you do question two? No, I did question two. Was question two the table? Mm. Yeah, yeah, table question. and graph, drawing it. Okay, what is question two? Let's see. Oh, now this is KS. This is oh, interesting. Uh, yeah. So this is ionic equilibria. I told you, right? Do not, do not try and predict what will come out because you will be disappointed. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Whatever comes up, you still need to do it, right? So, you know, there's no point of losing yeah. sleep over it. Instead, you will know each and every topic in chemistry can come out because chemistry is experimental. Unlike physics, which is, you know, sometimes theoretical. So there are certain things in physics that will never come up. But in chemistry, every single topic can come up. Okay, maybe not atomic structure because atomic structure cannot, you know, you, 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 you can't get the structure of an atom in the lab. Maybe they can, but I don't know. I don't know how they're going to do it. It has to be very creative. Anyway, so you know Ka is this. So this is just RCO2H uh, going to RCO2 minus plus H plus. I have done a mistake there. This is a carboxylic acid. So it's talking about a weak acid. Can you define a weak acid for me? Or well, it, it, or what is it? It doesn't mm. dissociate very well. Uh, nope. If it doesn't dissociate at all, then you're not going to get Ka. Ka is not zero, right? So it, it doesn't does dissociate. dissociate very well. It doesn't dissociate very well. Uh, you're yeah, missing the point. You got to know your definition, boy. You got to talk about it partial, is. partially dissociate, or you got to talk about reversibly dissociate. Dissociate into what? You see, this is the important definition, right? I think you're, uh -huh. you are losing your point now, okay? You've learned quite a lot of things and you know that this topic will come up because you've done it in school. You gotta know about definition. Usually the first bit of a question in paper four or paper two, they always ask you on definition first, yeah? Probably wouldn't come up in paper five because paper five is more about experimental skills, but you know, you are not just doing paper five on its own. You will also be doing paper four as well. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so whatever on the left, it's going to appear at the bottom, whatever on the right is going to appear on top. But we know that for a weak acid, there are two assumptions. This is one mole is to one mole. So whatever concentration this is, the conjugate base, is the same as the concentration of the H plus. So you can simplify it to H plus square. And then very little of the acid dissociate, very little of it dissociate in the beginning. So whatever concentration you have at equilibrium is going to be similar to the concentration at the very beginning, which is the initial concentration. That was what you did in the theory, right? Anyway, so yep. this one, the student measured the pH of eight buffer solutions. So we have a buffer, this is weak acid. When we have a buffer, we have different stuff. We have Na plus X minus, a second component in the system, which gonna dissociate completely. In this case, your X minus happened to be your I think I probably use X minus so that you can see better. HX going to X minus, so N plus X minus. This is just a recap of what you did before. So the concentration of X minus from the salt is so much greater than the X minus from the weak acid. Do you remember all this? Yep. So that is just going to be H plus and then X minus from the salt but your acid still dissociate very little. So that is still the initial concentration of the acid. This is for the buffer, okay? Now, what do we know? Uh, we're gonna mix different volume of distilled water. We're gonna have this much concentration of the acid. So I'm just gonna use HX just to simplify my concept, yeah? And then this much concentration of the NAX just to simplify my concept again. Uh, now, 
I have talked about two things so far. Remember just now I talked about, I'm just gonna use a bit of space here, yeah? Let me draw some stuff up. I probably won't go through the question straight away. Yeah? I just wanted to highlight a couple of things. Remember from the solid, you can get a solution. This is solid to solution. Remember that? This is called making up a solution. So this is question number one, making a stock solution. So your solution could be concentrated. Now there are two ways to get different concentration of this solution. Now I can get it to be different concentrations. So this is multiple. I want to do multiple experiments, okay? Whereas this one, I just want to do one experiment, let's say titration, one experiment, i.e. titration, which I do a couple of times. I repeat it, right? Repeat the times, but I'm using the exact same concentration. Just need one concentration. Just need one concentration. Whereas here, our experiment, we need many different concentration, many different concentrations. Do you know what I'm trying to imply here? So from your solid, you're gonna get a solution. This is going to be your concentrated solution. I'm going to reduce the concentration by doing dilution. Okay, so far, this is just one time dilution. That was what I discussed just now. Do you remember yeah. that? All right, just yes. do it one time. Then you just get one, one concentration, right? From here, concentrated, you just get a dilute solution. Now that particular question was asking you to do many. In fact, you need six for the experiment. I'm just drawing four to, to give you the idea. We need many different concentrations, okay? But we only have one okay. thing to begin with. We have one concentrated stuff. We're gonna get many concentrations. How do we do it? Do we do it one by one like this? No, 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 no. We don't do it like that. What we're gonna do is, this is called serial dilution. This is serial dilution. This is very important, not just in rate of reaction, it's when you want many different concentration from one concentrated solution. Instead of doing it each and every time by burette, okay? Uh, I mean, into four different things, you know, you have to do it, top it up, but you only need it one time anyway, or, you know, for just one reaction. So you don't need to make up 250 cm every single time. Instead, what you do is, importantly, keep total volume constant. So I'm gonna show you something, all right? So let's say, let's say example, if this is 10 mole per dn cube, 10 mole per dn cube, then let's say this example is one mole per dn cube. So you reduce the concentration by 10 times. Okay, so far, so less, less dilute, right? I mean, less concentrated. So this is more dilute than that, right? But for this yeah. one, I don't want just one. I want many other one, okay? I'm gonna show you something, all right? If I keep the total volume constant, I just adjust, adjust or vary the volume of distilled water use. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna set up a table. So this is the volume of the ten mole per dm cube uh, solution. I don't tell you what solution it is. Okay, this is the volume of distilled water. Are you following this so far? Okay, stop me when you don't understand, yeah? This is going to be total volume. Total volume of solution. Whenever I have a table, I should always have the unit. So per cm cube, per cm cube, per cm cube. What I'm going to do is really set up a final column, which is called the concentration, or what I can say relative concentration. Uh, actually, I'm gonna do concentration. It's better that way. So the unit of concentration will be in mole per dn cube. Okay, have you got a question on, on this so far? You understand what I'm doing here? Yes. Okay, now this is in paper three as well. Okay, I'm sure you have done something similar in paper three. One, two, three, four. I can do many different experiments. I can do five and six or whatever. I know it's related to that question we just did for the paper five, but instead of focusing on that question, I want to focus on the skill first. Okay, this is serial dilution. The concept is quite simple. It's because you need a lot of different experiments, you need a lot of different concentration, 
you don't want to have to do this one by one. Instead, you just start from the concentrated stuff and then you just adjust the volume of water. If I have, let's say, um, let's say total volume of solution, 100. Okay, let's say I have 100 of these. Then how much volume of distilled water should I have? Zero. Zero, okay. So what is going to be the concentration of my solution? Then it will be 10 moles per decimeter cube. Yeah, because it's, it's surf, right? Nothing has changed. Yeah. It's the original, this is original, okay. Of course, you are doing serial dilution, so we don't we don't really do original. This is like it's surf, you know. We don't we don't bother doing this, okay. Now I'm gonna go all the way to the extreme. When you are planning experiments, you don't want to like become ninety nine. This is a difficult number. <laughs> you don't you don't do things like this, okay? You want to spread out your x axis because if your graph is this small, one cm cube difference, it's not going to be a very good graph. You want to spread out the x axis later on so that you get a good spread of result, okay? 99 is going to be a bad choice, okay? Can you choose something else for me? What volume would you oh, go next? 80. You're in the lab. Sorry, yeah. 80, okay, could do. I mean, it's really up to you. I mean, you can choose anything. It's up to me then to, this, to tell you, you know, whether it's all right or not. How about the volume of distilled water? 20. And then what is going to be the total volume? 100. 100. So now I've mixed in a bit of distilled water. I mix these two together. But before I use it for my reaction, I have to really shake it up to mix it. Suggest why I have to shake up the solution mixture before I use it for a reaction. You know, I add this from one burette. I add this from another burette. Now there's another thing. Should I use measuring cylinder or should I use burette? So you can, you can be asked this question, right? Burette versus measuring cylinder. Which one should you use? Well, if you want the definitely. experiment to be more accurate, definitely be right. If you don't want me to be super accurate, then, you know, it doesn't matter, okay? But obviously, I will probably go for the burette, then you'll be two decimal places or something like that. So you set up two different burettes, you pass this much, you pass this much. Now, another question for you. A burette can only read up to 50 cm cube, agree? Yeah. So how are you going to measure 80.00 cm cube? To 50 and 30. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. You got that. I mean, that's quite an easy question. It's just that some, some students will be like, oh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay. But okay. You, you, you got it. All right. No, it's fine. What is going to be the concentration here? How would you work it out? We use ratio. Uh huh. Okay. Would it be bigger than 10 or lesser than 10? It will be less than 10. Uh huh. Okay. Suggest how would you work it out? I know you say you use ratio. Why don't you work it out and tell me? Okay. This is basically what Paper 5 is all about, you see? It's just about skills. Isn't it just eight? Sorry, you got eight? Uh, yeah. I agree with you. So basically what I do is I will have 10 times 80 over 100. So there's just eight, okay? So that's the ratio that I will be doing. I know it will be a smaller number. It decreased by, by that. It decreased by that ratio as well, okay? Now suggest a couple of other volumes that you're going to get. Well, well, 60, 40, 20. Sorry, 60, 40, 20 could do. And then there will be, I don't know, 40, 60, and then 80. And then you're going to get, well, the same thing. 100, 100, 100. Then this is going to decrease by two each and every time. Uh, because th that will be, I don't know, 10 times 60 over 100. So that is 6, 4, and 2, and so on and so on, okay? But then when you use 0 here, would you use 0? That is my next question. If there's another reading, would you go for 0? Mm, no. Why? Because it's just water. Yeah, because it was just water. <laughs> if you think if your reaction is with this thing, if it's just water, there will be no reaction, right? Okay, so, you know, these are the kind of common sense thing that, that you need to think about, okay? However, if, if you have a graph, if you have a graph, and then you need to think on the x-axis, when your volume of this solution is zero, does it pass through? I mean, you could have rate of reaction on the y-axis. Like you said, if it's just water, there's no reaction. 
if there's no reaction, red will be zero. Do you, do you, you know what I'm saying? So there's no change yeah. in red at all because red will be zero. So you know your graph has to pass through zero when it is zero CMQ of this solution because no reactant, no reaction, therefore zero red, something like that. Okay. Do you get yeah. the idea of uh, serial dilution now? Yeah. Sure. Okay. So that is called serial dilution. There are two different strategies. I mean, there are two different kind of methods. This is what you do when you just need one concentration, you make a whole volumetric plus of it. Why? Because you're going to pipette out and do many different titration. I mean, you're going to get to the same concordant or consistent titer, but just based on one concentration. Whereas here, you want different, different concentration. That's why you do serial dilution. It's much more time productive in the lab. Okay. 